Hi. Uh, what was it? Greetings from the Pacific Northwest. I think that's where I live. Like many of you, I need a trip to frickin' Barber. Although at my age, I guess I'm lucky to still have hair. Hey, if you can hear it in the background, what you hear playing is Quicksilver Messenger Service. You might not be able to hear it because it's out in the living room and I'm in a, the record room. But anyhow, so that's what's going on back there. It's been a while. been a hot minute. Um, uh, I came back to decide to come back making videos mostly because you people are lost without me. And I realize now that much like Sergeant Holka, your big toe, that you can't go on without Sergeant Holka. Wait, that was stripes. Never mind. Disregard that as well. Uh, on a serious note, um, I did come back. As you guys know, I was uh, graced by the presence of Hannah, the Omaha introvert. She came out and she did a tour of the Northwest. While she was out here, she popped in to say hello. And we did a couple of videos and we did a, a couple of trips you know, went to some record stores and stuff and kind of got the bug back a little bit. Um, so I'm back on my channel. When we last left and we had our channel before and I slowed down with videos on my channel, I I, I kind of, things have not been super awesome for me the last couple of years. I've kind of made some decisions that didn't always work out in terms of uh, my health, my mental well-being the best. And so I kind of decided at that point that I was going to step back and reevaluate and reassess and decide, you know, where I was at. And I was going to, try, you know, part of me decided, you know what, I'm going to try to find the old bow, the, the bow that used to make me happy, the, the smiling, charismatic, fun guy. And uh, quite frankly, I've learned that you can't go back. Who you were five minutes ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago is not who you are anymore. You Life is changed. Life is, uh, we, we, we're faced with decisions. We are on a path. Decisions come up. We make decisions. Sometimes the path is well marked, well lit, and, and it's easy to figure out. Sometimes it's not easy to figure out, and we, and we choose the wrong things. And all you can do is, can, is Charlie Mike, as they used to say, continue the mission. I've learned one thing as an old infantry soldier I should have remembered is you can't double back on the trail even for somebody, you know, hey, no man left behind. Thought I was left behind, doubled back from me. You can't do that. It's that, that, that trail is perilous. It's now mined and there's, there's trail watchers that are ready to ambush you. You can't do it. All you can do is press on. Uh, life hands us challenges. Uh, we make decisions based on information as best we can. And sometimes it works out and when it doesn't, you have to learn from them. You have to grow from them. Life's about growth. Life is about opportunity. It's about uh, spending time with people that matter, uh, friendships, stuff like that. You can't, you can't just rediscover something. So, uh, you know, through my trip through the past, you know, what, what was I up to? Well, I did a lot of reading and I, did, I read a lot of books about throwing good after bad, f failure, uh, if it, no, a book nobody's ever heard of, but uh, Fall Spring by Pat Jordan. I, here's one I happen to have still with me here. This is A Street Without Joy, uh, which was written by Bernard Fall. Uh, it's about the French experience in Vietnam. I did a lot of stuff, read a lot of books about Vietnam and a lot of, watched a lot of movies about Vietnam too, you know, about youth lost and uh, struggle and to what, war just, to, to what end. That was another thing I read. Uh, you know, how, how long do you have to keep throwing good after bad? Who wants to be the last guy to die for a, lo a lost cause, as it were? Um, you know, all it did was serve to make me even sadder. <laughs> so, quite frankly, I've decided that, uh, you know, you just got to press on and just do the best you can and, and spend time with people that matter. Spend, you know, the, the, all this stuff kind of reminds us of that. You know, I spent a lot of time watching movies too. This is, you know, the kind of stuff I was watching, like Hamburger Hill, Casualties of War, Platoon, uh, Gardens of Stone. I spent a lot of time watching Paul Newman movies too. More stuff about, you know, about opportunity wasted, uh, lost causes. You know, Cool Hand Luke, um, The Hustler, The Color of Money. But much like the end of The Color of Money, Paul Newman, I'm back, and. That kind of brings me what I'm here to talk about today is that um, 
with uh, record collecting, I, I kind of started to realize that I was going down a wrong path. I was chasing things that I had no business chasing, that things that didn't really matter to me. Music should be about things that matter to you, things that uh, give you special feelings or uh, special remembrances, special memories, stuff like that. Basically, what I was doing is I'd taken this book right here, which is well-worn, because I've looked at it a million times, Endless Trip, and this became my Bible. And if it was in here, boy, I had, I had to have it. And what I started doing was I was buying records. I wasn't even listening to them, folks. I was like, oh, this was an Endless Trip. This is a rare psychedelic record. I absolutely have to have it. I covet this thing, and then I'd buy it, and then I wouldn't even listen to it. Um, so, as you can see, this... This is uh, my psychedelic section now, um, and it's kind of empty. What I've done is I've culled through it, and if I get any interest in this, what I plan on doing is uh, um, I'm going to do like a trade video where I'm going to show records in my collection that I'm willing to part with, and, and I'll come back with a list of things that I'm looking for, primarily um, soul, R&B kind of stuff, the stuff that my parents played growing up, that's the kind of, that's, that music has a special place in my heart and it means something to me. These psychedelic records don't, don't mean as much to me anymore. It's a different time and a different place and I've moved beyond that now. Um, and that's another thing, that's why I came back to the, the VC is because I've missed the kinships, I missed the friendships that, that we build in here. And there are some people that think that this is just shouting into a void I've made real connections with people through this. You know, it's this is a different day and age. This isn't like when I was growing up where, you know, you had to go to somebody's house and hang out. You know, you, you were kind of uh, limited to proximity. Now we've got the entire world at our fingertips. Um, and the VC is, I've been told by some people that the VC is dead. The VC is dead, long live the VC. VC is not dead. I mean, if yeah, if you're looking, if you're going to worry about the negative, the people out there that are saying harmful things, being negative, the trolls, the people who are out and out making up stories and lying about you, that VC is there, man. You can find it right at the tip of your finger. It's there. But if you're looking for people that you have things in common with, people that music, movies, friendship, you know, that's that VC is there too. Um, Hannah, the Omaha introvert, was uh, there's a TV show that she loves that she introduced me to, uh, and I'm going to quote part of the opening it's a uh, and it's it's uh the faces have changed but the hassle still remain well it's not not a hassle but you know that's the thing yeah from when i started the vc is different there's a lot of different people in there than from when i started but i still have great friendships there's a lot of good people out there uh it's just you know people we we make friendships with people. Boy, I'm eight minutes in. I haven't even shown a record yet other than Quicksilver. Uh, I'm going to cut this out, but you know, you know what I mean? Sometimes we connect with people and, and, and sometimes, and we stay in contact. Sometimes just ships passing in the night. That's just how it is. That's life. Um, anyhow, so what I decided to do in this video here is show records that you can get on the cheap that move me because it doesn't, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Um, so let's start with this. This is Sergio Mendes in Brazil 66. This is nothing more than Brazilian lounge music. This is a 98 cent fine all day long. This is not an expensive record. You can find it anywhere. But this music, to me, has a lot of soul. Has a lot of, um, it speaks to me. It's, I find it relaxing. It's nice to put your feet up and listen to it. So, um, you've got Glenn Campbell. Gentle on my mind. Yeah, Glenn Campbell, okay. He's, well, it's just Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell was in the Wrecking Crew. He's a fantastic guitar player. He has an excellent singing voice. I I would rather play this 50 times before I listen to December's Children. That's just that's just where I am now. This is this music speaks to me. That music does not. Um, man, this mu this one right here has got me through a lot of hard times. This is Judy Collins' Wildflowers. Uh, both sides now. You know, sweet Judy Blue Eyes here. I don't know where I'd be without that song. Because that song, you know, sometimes when you're down and out, you, you need that down and out music to kind of, you know, to let you know that there's somebody else feeling what you feel. Um, that, that's another thing, too. Uh, Brian, Shamrock and Records. Uh, why does he only have 500 and some subs? Jeez, that guy's got a great channel. Uh, he did a Sad Bastard video. 
was amazing. He talked about all kinds of great songs, and I really connected with it. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, another good channel out there that uh, is new, although she probably has more subs than I do now, but the uh, the Vinyl Guru, man, she's she's a hoot. She's fun. She's smart. She shows good records. She has a huge collection, and she's she's funny. That you know, that's that's what brought me back to the BCs because there's there's still fun people out there. Um, this record right here. Tom Jones. I'm a huge Tom Jones fan. And this this one right here has got all the sad bastard songs you need, man. Uh, and, and all different levels. you got Delilah, which is kind of like Revenge. Why Can't I Cry? Uh, Only a Fool Breaks His Own Heart. I mean, that's the kind of... That, I, would, I would listen to Tom... I listen to that album probably three times a month, you know? And I don't listen to uh, the 50-foot hose anymore. I listened to it once, and then I never played it again. Um... Here's, you know, you want some more soulful rock and roll. This is it's not so much folk or soul. This is more rock and roll. This is the Rascals, uh, uh, Gruden. And it's also got A Girl Like You. Uh, and then a song that was later, later covered by Pat Benatar, You Better Run. I mean, that's some good soulful rock and roll. Man, anything by the association is a great pickup. They cover heartbreak. They cover love. They cover addiction, recovering from addiction. And that's what this, the big one on here, which is psychedelic. Pandora's Golden Heebie Jeebies. I mean, that's good stuff. Tim Harden. Folk music. But it speaks to me. Uh, I remember he does a version of If I Were a Carpenter. First time I heard it was as a, in a I was either in high school or in the army, I can't remember, watching The Wonder Years. And the Denise the Grease episode, if you guys remember that. And he also does a great cover of Red Balloon, man. Red Balloon is a terrific song about heartbreak. You know, Pinning of My Eyes. It's just, it's just beautiful, wonderful music. Uh, I grabbed two of these because I couldn't decide which one to show. But anything by Spencer Davis, man. I mean, in fact, anything by Steve Winwood from the 60s. Is, now, these are not expensive. They are not hard to find records. This is some of the best blue-eyed soul out there. Seriously. Um, you want just some fun music? The Monkees. Yeah, the Monkees get a bad rap because they didn't record their own music. Them and a lot of other people, the Wrecking Crew did. But by this album... This is them. You want some psychedelic music? This is a cheap-ass psychedelic record. It's got some great stuff on here. Randy Scouse Git, For Pete's Sake. Uh, what else is this? Another, uh, can't Get Her Off My Mind. I'll Spend My Life With You. I mean, this is some great music. And by this album here, they're actually starting to take control of their own their own um, career arch. They were done with NBC controlling them and telling them what they could and could not do. Nancy and Lee. I mean... This is freaking fantastic. It's, it's country, psych, it's beautiful vocals, great harmonies. I mean, Nancy Sinatra is amazing. My dad saw her at his fire base in like 1966. Uh, but, yeah. But Lee Hazelwood, I mean, the two of them together made some great music together. And then last but not least, this is a top 10 album to me. This is uh, a great pop psych and i it's using terminology gets hard sometimes because sometimes when you think of something as psych they're like no that's pop music or no that's this or no that's that i think of psych as this well you know what i'm just not going to use those type of terms anymore that was wrong of me to say that this is music that moves me and that's what i'm going to talk about for now on music that has meaning to me and this tommy james record i mean crystal boo persuasion uh, I Am a Tangerine, uh, Sugar on Sunday, which was later covered by The Click. I think he helped produce that record. Crimson and Clover. I mean, this record is beautiful. This is a beautiful record. All right. So that's enough. That's what I'm up to. If there is interest, I will do a video of the records in my collection that I'm willing to part with, that I'm willing to trade. But if you want to do a trade with me, you're going to have to be a subscriber and if you're a new subscriber and I don't know you that well, we're going to have to work it out so that there's some sort of, you know, repartee so that you can trust me and I can trust you that we're going to follow through with what we say. And anytime I do trades and people or VCLT, people that know me know this is how I operate. I always send first and then you decide condition because I'm not the big condition expert. Anyhow, I think my videos get cut off in about 15 minutes. So. It was good to see you. I'm going to come back and make more videos, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.